Oh, oh I don't want to get up. Okay. Good morning. Everyone salutes here. It's like a lot of doormen and servicemen kind of like salute when you come in as if I were a general or something. Oh, it's very dusty. Oh. <laughs> I guess the scarf has to come up. Today we're exploring Bauda and what there is to see, do, and eat in this area. Located northeast of Kathmandu, Bauda is the home to the great Bodhanath Stupa. Due to its Tibetan Buddhist influence, Bauda is like a world of its own, where you can forget about the outside world and get lost in your inner one. Whereas the cows are kind of like, I guess, taken and um, cared for because of the milk. A lot of times these bulls are kind of like homeless bulls and yet at the same time they're considered sacred so no one can kill them. Um, it's just like a sad kind of lifestyle. They just forage for food on the road. Eventually, I guess, just die. At the same time, this is a country where killing cows and I guess bulls are considered not done. But Boda is a very busy hub. You'll find a lot of traffic going through on these streets. Despite the fact that the road condition isn't so great, it's still culturally very interesting because it's a mixture of uh, Tibetan Buddhism. Um, so you'll find some great um, little restaurants or cafes inside um, the Boda area. There's a KK Mart. That's the closest it comes to 7-Eleven in Nepal. The entrance to Boda is down here. You can see right there. I think you can make it right here. Made it! <laughs> the footing here isn't so strong, but I really do love this place, this area. I feel pretty much at home here. Same, same faces. There's a lot of homeless dogs in this neighborhood. And I always feel a little sad because every dog deserves a home. Every dog deserves to be loved. Smell the spices. Mm. Ah, uh, this is an incense store. Look at the Himalayan rock salt. So you'll see some of these shops. Ooh, so they have a lot of interesting um, things in the shop. They're all like Buddhist things to facilitate rituals. Eat bowls. Oh. I bought my entrance uh, ticket to Bonat uh, for 250 rupees. Um, that's for four travelers. This is the largest stupa in Kathmandu, uh, probably even in Nepal. A lot of times people come here when they want wishes fulfilled, and you'll find this, this stupa open 24 hours and people walking in till late at night. Historically, the stupa was an important post on the trade route between Lhasa and Kathmandu. Originally a Tamang settlement, the community today is a mixture of Tibetan and Sherpa cultures. Now I've gotten to like coming here. It changes at various times of the day, from lighting to the amount of people that are here, just the overall energy. devotion because you can see a lot of people here practicing 
um, some of these gods have like the, the tikka powder on it because you can do your worship and then afterwards you can place a tikka on your third eye. We are, I think, here. And then these are all the monasteries that are in, in this area. So that's kind of a lot of monasteries. There are many monasteries in Boda, but one of the easiest to visit and find is right next to the main entrance. Um, right now it's 6 o'clock, we're at rush hour at uh, Bodna. Right now the crowd flow is very heavy. It's like it's almost like peak traffic hour here and trying to cross this traffic is almost like trying to cross a Nepalese street. I also see a lot of people doing prostrations. So there's an entrance to the stupa. This is where everyone does their prostrations. People are probably concentrated on their own money, Padme Oms and prayers when they're they're doing their kind of turns around the stupa. When the clock strikes 6.30, the guards come and they close up this raised part of the stupa. I've noticed like there are a lot of Nepalese guys who are really heavily into the selfie taking. Like, they will spend time like getting the perfect like photo or selfie photo. If I on the rooftop of a lot of these buildings there are restaurants where you can eat while meditating on your view. I wish there were a way to help homeless dogs, you know? There's just so many here. And every one of them deserves a home and some care. I see Tinker in every one of them. Do you know of any kind of like organization where they take care of like street dogs or homeless dogs? And please feel free to comment them below and let me know. Roam the interconnected alleys and get lost. Many of the streets house monasteries. Workshops producing tankas, prayer flags, singing bowls, and, and every essential accessory for Tibetan Buddhist life. So we're in Asmita's shop, or her family shop, and yeah, what... <laughs> okay, so explain what a tanka is. Tanka is actually like a traditional art, and it is supposed to have come from Tibet. Yes, and uh, it's been in practice for a long time now. You can find them in monasteries. Tankas and statues and people even take them as for decorations mm -hmm. or also because they want to perform like pujas and meditations okay. so they have some like spiritual values these tankas uh -huh. it's been preserved since like decades now for a long time if you're a believer or you feel like you need a certain deity ah, yes, to guide yes. you then you would like if someone's sick then you can give them like medicine buddhas and okay. if you want to prosper in your studies or wisdom then you give them like that so every deity has their own specific meanings yeah. and like Feels where they can actually help you, like mm -hmm. spiritually. Hello. Oh, smell the incense in here. Uh, I feel like I should be hearing chanting music right now. This is cool. You know, I've never actually explored the back roads or the back alleys of um, Boda before, so I'm really quite excited. I wasn't sure if they made them or they imported them, but apparently they made them. Turn right. That was a quick left and then right. <clears throat> it's two minutes, it says. Ooh. See how you can easily get distracted. Wow. Okay, detour. Detour. So where are we right now? Dara to. We are at Dara to. Dara means it's a tap. Uh -huh. It's a tap and toll means it's area. 
Okay. okay, thank you. You learn something new every day, especially when you travel. Wow. I didn't even know this place existed. You know, every time I come here, I've only been like around Bhagnath Stupa. I didn't even know like these active back alleys. We were so abundant with life. This street right here is the full body area or the full body street and you'll find a lot of uh, cafes and restaurants around this area even like street food or street snacks um, This is where I'm finding a lot of um, a lot of places to eat and it's right out or right off of uh, Bolton It's very much like the eating street This is where all the food's at So you see a lot of vendors with snacks that's lychee, corn, ooh, potatoes. If you've watched any of my food videos, you'll know there's lots of shops selling laffy, spicy rice noodles served either dry or in soup. There's also tendum and tukpa, which have redefined my taste buds. Look, there's a subway. I was wondering if there would be a subway in Nepal, and there is, right here. Okay, let's just explore this area just a little bit down from here. Around twilight and into the evenings, butter lamps are lit as a form of devotional prayer for loved ones past. Oh, I think I'm legally lost. Whoa, there's even more streets. Oh. oh my gosh, there's even more streets. I only saw one fraction of, of Balda. It's like a huge neighborhood. This goes to show you a lot of times that as travelers, we only really see a fraction of a site or of a location. The past couple of times I came here, I was only around Balda Stupa, and I never really went too far into these back street alleys and this is just loaded with a lot of soul character and culture this is the heart and soul of a neighborhood i think i either smell pot or incense so i hope you enjoyed this video if you did give me a thumbs up or a like if you're new to my channel please subscribe and please leave comments down below as always i love reading what you write and want to hear what you have to say, what you think about this video, okay? Oh, so until then, travel safe, smart, and fun. May the girl be with you. If you enjoyed this video, remember to give it a thumbs up, give it a share, and if you're new to my channel, please subscribe for more of my solo travel adventures as I take you inside and knock off my bucket lists of travel. Leave your comment down below and let me know what you think of my video. Above all, may the girl be with you. Make oh. a video and say that it's yours. Oh, I hope I have my like. Oh, I, I want this one. This is like, yeah, this is like an apartment. You just don't have a kitchen, that's all. Maybe you do. It has. You have a dining room. It has a kitchen. Oh. Yeah, then I'll start comparing. No, <laughs> Have you seen yours? No, I haven't. Look, look at this little black bear there. Oh, little black bear there. It is a very peaceful area. It's pretty clean and awesome. There's a possibility that people will see them like monks or you know people going by who are doing um, you know, practicing dharma. Hopefully they're treated better than the cow. Are you folks into YouTube or social media? Or? Well, yes, yeah, social media plays a lot of crucial roles in teenagers. I'm not active in any of those myself, but uh -huh. yeah, social media has been like um, a, you know a big platform. People uh, they tend to spend a lot of time in social media, yeah, like, like Instagram and Facebook. So and Instagram and Facebook are the top ones. Currently Instagram, I feel so because all yeah. my friends are into Instagram more than Facebook. Uh -huh. So they're like literally into Instagram and. Wow. Uh, Maybe Snapchat. No, I do watch a lot of funny videos, like of um, like elephants and the superwoman. Liza Cousy. I love Liza Cousy. <laughs> and uh -huh. like I even watch PewDiePie. And yeah, teenagers are really getting into YouTube these days. Some of them, you know, they're actually now it's like YouTube can be a career. So this approach is coming. Like okay, YouTube can actually be a career in Nepal too.